My name is Nora Lester Murad, and I am so honored to interview you um, for my blog and my newsletter and for PalFest and for all folks to hear directly from you about your experiences in Palestine. I know your time is short, so I'll try to be brief. And um, please, if you would just tell us all, where are you right now? And today is Thursday, May 3rd. Where are you and what's happening with PalFest? Okay, I'm speaking to you from my home in Cairo, uh, and we're in the final stages of planning PalFest 2012, which is going to uh, go into Gaza. It's really going to be like two arms, or maybe even three. On the one hand, the main body of PalFest will go into Gaza through the Rafah crossing on Saturday, and we'll have the usual events there, uh, seminars, workshops, working with universities, school children, um, <clears throat> kids in refugee camps, and also doing um, literary events and musical events in the evenings. And that's going to be from the 5th until the 10th. Um, meanwhile, there is going to, there will be some events in um, Mirzid and Ramallah, which will also come under the banner of Palfas. There will be some, uh, a creative writing workshop, and there will be an event at the Sakakini Center in Ramallah. And then we're going to have a closing event here in Cairo when we come back on um, Friday the 11th, where it's like a, a reprise, where we will tell our audience here in Cairo about the experience um, and uh, just kind of report back and, and close the festival from Cairo. I see. And uh, if I'm correct, you founded PalFest, which stands for the Palestine Festival of Literature. Why did you found PalFest? What's the purpose of it? What's its mission? Uh, well, the mission statement is to bring world-class um, cultural events to communities that would otherwise have no access to them. And it was born of my experience when I visited um, Palestine, uh, Jerusalem, and Ramallah, and Bethlehem, um, and the Khalil, actually in 2000, in November 2000, and then again in October 2003, where I kind of realized that um, nothing you read about the situation in Palestine, um, however graphic, however true, ever prepares you for the reality. And that the reality is subtle and is multi-layered and is really important. And um, in brief, it's that uh, there is this brutal situation where people, I mean, Gaza is very obvious, but of course all the Palestinian towns and cities are living under Israeli siege. Um, and it's not even a, a, a static siege. It's, uh, it's a siege that is a tool in a progressing um, occupation uh, where um, the aim is to, to take more and more of the land and economic resources from people. And within the siege, within this vice, there is a society that is alive and vibrant and sophisticated and hopeful and insisting on uh, living with grace and with dignity and on being part of the great conversations that are going on in the world. Um, so, on the one hand, the aim was to do what little one can to support this already really strong and, and vibrant and creative society. And on the other hand, to give the opportunity to uh, people who believe that they know the situation, that we sense that they don't really, and who have the eyes or the ears of a wide public in the West, uh, to come and live the Palestinian experience, to just live with the Palestinians for um, a few days, to travel like them, to go through checkpoints like them, um, to listen to their music, to engage in discussions about social, political, cultural, literary, whatever questions, to talk to the students and work with them, and um, to just go away with that experience and do whatever they want with it. And uh, it's been amazing because people have, of course, realized that, that they didn't know what they thought they knew, that there was much, much, much more out there 
to learn. And on the Palestinian side, we've been tremendously grateful and honored and happy that um, that Palestinian society has taken progress into its heart and um, we've become part of the scene, which is wonderful. That's very true. It's wonderful for me living here in Jerusalem and having the opportunity to participate and to benefit from from all that you're doing. So thank you so much. Um, are there, now it's five years you've been doing this. This is the fifth year, if I'm correct. Are there any particular uh, events that are per, that are especially memorable to you that are part of Palafest that you can tell us about? Well, of course, you know, like you say about your kids, every event is memorable and every event is special and is close to your heart. Um, one of the lovely things that have come out of, uh, of Palafest um, are, of course, the Palestine writing workshops because it's uh, one thing to take in a festival that, that is there for a week and it's another thing to have a continuous presence. And that developed very, very naturally in a, in a beautiful, organic way in that um, authors who came with Palfest to Palestinian cities and universities felt that they wanted to, uh, to come back. They wanted to contribute, they wanted to, to engage and to go on being part of, 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 this, um, of this relationship. And, um, and we were very lucky, things kind of came together. On the one hand, of course, we were working, we, we got to know, um, we got to know Morgan, um, and she was doing really good work with writing, and, um, and was also had this tremendous commitment to, to Palestine and to the students and, and so on. And at the same time, our, um, some good friends gave us, or loaned us, let us say, uh, allowed us to use for five years a beautiful small building which was part of the old Birzic University campus. So it's an old traditional building with a history. Um, and so we've been using the building, the old building in old Birzic village for the writing workshops and we hope to use it for more things and by doing that we have also become part of the project to um, to you know uh, what's it called reinvigorate um, restore the heart of old years village so it seems to me that that's a project that has um, that has had a, a positive and benign um, influence on in, in, in many different directions and I'm, I'm very very fond of it Wow okay um... Uh, now, Hadaf, you're not just an activist, you're a award-winning and very prolific and world-known author yourself. I have some of your books right here and I'm enjoying them. Um, I, I'd like to know how, how your involvement with Palestine has influenced your writing. Well, it's a hard question to answer because um, because my involvement with Palestine, in a, in a sense, began when I was born. I mean, you know, I, I, I was born into Nasser's Egypt, and the Palestinian cause was a cause that, you know, that, that was with all of us. And, um, and we were brought up on it and grew up on it. And, of course, when I was very young, we lived through the 1967 war and, the, you know, the, the whole tragedy of, the, of that episode um, and so on. And so, really... I think if if you look at, at um, if you look at my two novels, you'll find that in each one there is a very strong strand that deals with the um, the issue of, of Palestine. Um, if you look at my collected essays, Metzatera, then again, but that's not fiction. You're asking about fiction. So really, yeah, I guess what I can say is that it is there. It is it is one of the the, the great issues that are present in my work and. And that will always be present in my work until until the day of the, the just solution comes, which we hope will be in our lifetimes. Yeah, we do. We do. I'll ask you a, a closing question, and thank you again for giving me so much of your time. What are you most looking forward to uh, in Palfest 2012? As you're sitting there literally getting ready to leave and, and, and to come to Palestine, um, what are you looking forward to? 
again, it's hard because, um, again, Ghazda has been part of one's um, mental and emotional landscape for so long, and uh, and its images are so are so disparate. Because on the one hand, it's a place of of siege and hardship and and Operation Cross led and, and so on. On the other hand, we know that it's a place of great natural beauty. But in fact, it was it was like um, it was like a summer resort for 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 ancient Egyptians actually, and then Romans and, and so on. Um, so there's that, and again, a place of great hardship and so on, but also a place of great resilience and courage and grace and and people continuing to 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 live and work and produce and. Um, so I don't know. I think really, maybe the moment when the band that we are taking from Cairo, we're taking Iskenderella, which are a very popular revolutionary band, which sing you know, sort of very rousing, but also traditional songs. And I think the moment when uh, when they sing and they gel with the Palestinian audience in Gaza, that would be that would be the moment for me. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I can totally understand now why everyone I've asked about you has told me how much they're in love with you. You're so uh, beautiful and articulate and refreshing, and I'm absolutely so honored and thrilled to have spent this time with you, and I wish you all the best uh, in Gaza. We're here uh, in the West Bank uh, participating in things that you've inspired and founded, and we'll be continuing on. Thank you so very much. Thank you very, very much indeed. I'm delighted. I'm very happy that you are carrying Palfest for us in the West Bank while we are otherwise engaged in Gaza. And I think it's brilliant that this year Palfest is Gaza, Raman, Labirzeit, and Cairo. Thank you for this. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you. You too. You too. Be well. I will cut the interview there and just tell you, honestly, truly, thank you. I'm so, so thrilled, and I wish you the best, and I hope that someday I will meet you in person.